Good morning and welcome to the service here at Our Saviour Lutheran Church. This is, God willing, for the time being, our last online-only service. And we will be following the order of Matins, which you will find in Lutheran Service Book on page 219. Page 219. Alternatively, you can download the order of service in booklet format. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will find the link just below the video in the description of the video, in the box just below. And it should be visible, the order of service should be visible to you if you are watching this on the uh, website of Our Saviour Lutheran Church, oslc.org.uk. Today is the first Sunday in Advent and the beginning of the new church year. In our prayers today, we remember our brothers and sisters at St. David Lutheran Church in Cardiff and Pastor Bessel, who is their vacancy pastor, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, as well as the uh, Lutheran Church Synod of France, who have just elected a new president. So we pray for them and also for their new uh, 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 board of governors. And in Fairham, we pray for Fairham Baptist New Life Church, and also for our long-standing par partners in prayer, Somali Lutheran Church. We give thanks to God for his answer to our <coughs> prayers for Phil Arnold, who is recovering well uh, from uh, the stabbing of which he was a victim a few weeks ago. And finally, we add to our prayer list uh, Desiree, uh, whom we prayed for last week as well, uh, she's the niece of uh, members of our uh, Brighton mission, and she's awaiting bone marrow transplant. She's uh, quite poorly in the Philippines, so we pray for her and for her loved ones. Our service now begins as we uh, stand to sing our opening hymn, number 334, 334 in the Lutheran service book, O Lord, how shall I meet you? <laughs> Oh, 
Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father. to save us. from the 
God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory A hymn of St. Ambrose, Saviour of the Nations, come.
from the prophet Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, beginning at the 5th verse. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when they shall no longer say, As the Lord lives who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But, as the Lord lives who brought up and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country, and out of all the countries where he had driven them, then they shall dwell in their own land. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 8th verse. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarrelling and jealousy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning at the first verse. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfil what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! O Lord, have mercy on us! Thanks be to God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In his days Judah will be saved. And Israel will dwell securely. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. 
peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus Christ came to the holy city of Jerusalem, accompanied by the songs of praise of his disciples. As he comes to us not now by his word, tune our hearts also to sing your praise, here on earth and in your heavenly kingdom for ever and ever. Amen. We have yet again come to Advent, the season that if you look out of the window or perhaps even into your own living room, and certainly if you are uh, visiting ta uh, town or watching your television, listening to the radio, is known as pre-Christmas or the run-up to Christmas or even in some cases, or for some people at least, the beginning of Christmas. And if that's how you like to celebrate, go ahead, be my guest. But that is not what Advent is in the Church. As you will remember, the word Advent, which comes from Latin and simply means the coming or the arrival. And as I like to tell primary school children when I go visit them and to speak to them about Advent, it's not about the coming of Christmas but it's about the coming or the arrival of Jesus. And in scripture, that coming or arrival of Jesus is threefold. One in the past, one in the present, and one in the future. About how Jesus came into the world, who was born of the Virgin Mary, to save the world, to become and to be our saviour, and by his life and all that he accomplished in his life, in his suffering and death, and by his resurrection and his glorious ascension to the right hand of God the Father, he has redeemed the world from the power of sin and death. And not only that, but Christ has been, had been coming into the world for a long time. A few decades ago, a Christian publishing house published a twin volume of, an intro, of introductions to the books of the Bible, an introduction to the Old Testament and an introduction to the New Testament. And the titles were these. The volume one was The Word Becoming Flesh and The Word Become Flesh. The whole of the Old Testament, from the fall onwards especially, is really fundamentally at its heart an account of the Word becoming flesh of the fulfilment of God's promise to Eve, even as she was being judged by God for her disobedience, that her seed would crush the serpent's head. And ever since then, God has been coming to his people. He already came to them in the garden. Adam and Eve sinned against God and hid themselves to get away from God, and yet God came to them and called out, Adam, where are you? He came to Noah and commanded him to build the ark so that he might not be destroyed when the wicked and evildoers were destroyed by the flood. He came to Abraham, who knew nothing. Abraham from, the, from Ur of the Chaldeans. And he called him out from his home to a place which he himself had prepared and which he promised to Abraham. And so he continues to come to Isaac, to Jacob, and calls him back from Haran, from his exile, to claim his inheritance. He came to Moses, and by Moses he came to the people of Israel. And he came as he rescued the people of Israel, gave them the promised land by Joshua, and defended them by the judges, gave them a king, so that they might have his protection. And as they 
wandered away into unbelief and into fleshliness, into worldliness and into idolatry. He came to them again and again by sending the prophets to say, Thus says the Lord. And from the exile, he called them home to Jerusalem. And all of this, these arrivals, these approaches of God by his word, by his servants, were fulfilled and they, were cul they culminated in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. As the Holy Spirit overshadowed the Blessed Virgin Mary and the seed of the woman was conceived in her womb, was born to the announcement of angels, grew up in holiness and righteousness, proclaimed the word of God, performed the wonderful deeds of the Lord amongst the poor and the sick and the hungry and the dying and the dead, gave up his life, though innocent, bearing the guilt of the world, and on the third day he rose again from the dead, so that by his life and death and resurrection, sin might be accounted for, the guilt of sin might be settled and removed from before God. And he sits now at the right hand of God the Father, because he to him has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And we are told and we confess in the creed, that he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. As he came in humility at his incarnation, he will come in glory at his return. And all the dead will be raised. And all who have lived will be judged in righteousness according to the will of God. And those who have done evil will be sent to everlasting punishment. And those who are found to be righteous will enter into eternal joy. And we are living in anticipation, expectation of that, sec of that coming, the second return of Christ. And therefore the season of Advent not only looks back to the Old Testament promises concerning the first coming of Christ, but it also focuses our minds, just like the end of the church year did, on the coming of Christ so that we might prepare ourselves. This is why we heard in our reading from Romans about the importance of casting off the works of darkness and putting on the armour of light because the night is far gone and the day is at hand. The day comes when the sun of righteousness comes from the east and lights up the whole world with his glory. And therefore we ought to walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarrelling and jealousy, but having put on the Lord Jesus Christ, making no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. And so now we live in that time suspended between those two comings, but Jesus is not far from us. He comes to us now. He continually comes to us in his word. He continually comes to us in the Holy Sacraments. Where he grafts more and more members into his body by holy baptism. And feeds his people with his own body and blood. And he speaks with his own voice in the gospel to us. So that he might prepare out of evildoers and the wicked those who are found to be righteous. That all our evil deeds, all that we have done, that merit eternal punishment from God, might be, we, that those, those deeds might be settled. That their sin and their guilt might be taken away from us now. So that when we come before him as our judge, we will find that the list of our sins is empty because he has taken them away from us. That he might continually deliver to us now, by his coming through these means of salvation, those, the fruits of his salvation, the fruits of his first coming, the benefit of his righteousness, 
the benefit of his suffering and death, the benefit of his resurrection, so that life and righteousness and holiness might reign in us and not sin and unrighteousness and death. And so it is appropriate, therefore, that we hear on this first Sunday in Advent the account of Christ's entry into Jerusalem. Because that entry into Jerusalem was the culmination of his earthly work. He entered into Jerusalem in order to fulfill the plan of God, to fulfill the promise that God made to Eve, to crush the serpent's head by allowing the serpent to bruise his heel as he submitted into death for the sins of the world, and that he might crush the serpent by his resurrection. And Jesus could have accomplished all of this without any help from anyone at all. But the fundamental reality and the truth is that God does not regret his creation. In our Bible study over the last few weeks, we have been studying the account of creation in Genesis chapter 1. And throughout that chapter we have this refrain, and God saw that he had, what he had made and behold it was good. God saw the light and it was good. He saw the sun, moon, and the stars, and they were good. And when he had completed his creation, when he created man in his image, male and female, he saw all that he had done, and behold, it was very good. Creation was no accident. It was the expression of God's overflowing love, so that he might call us to himself, come to us in love, to pour upon us his love and kindle in our hearts a love for himself and for one another. And because God it does not regret his creation but rather he cherishes it, he does not bypass creation when he saves it. But he saves all creation by entering into it and treating it as his own. And so also then Jesus, when he comes to enter the holy city of Jerusalem to fulfil the promises of the prophets, he sends out his disciples ahead of him to prepare his entry by bringing him this colt of a donkey. And it is not only an expression of humility, which it is, as the prophet Zechariah had already prophesied. But it is also an act of graciousness. These disciples who shown themselves repeatedly to be singularly inept in themselves, slow to understand and quick to misunderstand. It had nevertheless pleased Jesus to call them to be his apostles, to be those whom he would send out in his own name to proclaim his word so that disciples might be made of all nations. And so he sends them out to bring to him the means by which he would enter into Jerusalem. And when he did, in spite of their weak, the weakness of their faith and their frequent misunderstandings, their unbelief and the cowardice which they were about to display in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was pleased to receive their praises together with the praises of the crowd, even though it was so evident that what they were saying they did not really fully understand. They were crying Hosanna to the son of David and so he was, the king who will come to save us. And they quoted from Psalm 118, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And he did come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, save us now, is what he came to do, not in the way that they expected. But he was pleased to receive their praises, because he had called them. 
And he was pleased also to receive the gifts of the, the humble gifts by which they wanted to honor him. The clothes that were placed on the donkey, the clothes that were placed on the ground, the branches cut from the trees. He did not ask for great sacrifices, for remortgaging of houses in order to donate uh, unaffordable sums. He did not ask for gold and silver and magnificent jewels. But what they did have, he was pleased to receive. And here we see, in a nutshell, how Jesus works to bring about that salvation which he accomplished, which had been promised in the Old Testament, which he accomplished, as we hear in the pages of the New Testament, and which he delivers to us today, by which we are being saved for his second coming. That he calls and sends ordinary people, ordinary men, to use the things of this world which God himself has created, by which Jesus might be brought into full view and brought into that holy assembly, holy city, that is the Church of Christ. He doesn't come on a donkey, but he comes in other humble forms, ordinary water, ordinary bread and wine, ordinary human words. And when he comes and we recognise him, in spite of our sins, in spite of our unbelief, in spite of our cowardice, in spite of the many misunderstandings with which we mix to the pure teaching of the word of God on account of our frailty and our weakness and our obtuseness. He's pleased to receive our praises, knowing that just as he would do in Jerusalem, so also he will do with us, to reveal the full truth in due course. When we praise God for his love, when we lift up the name of Jesus for the glories of his salvation, I am fully convinced that we don't understand the half of what we are saying. If we did, surely there would be no force on earth that would shut us up and wipe the smile off our faces. But all these things shall be revealed. But while we await for full enlightenment, Jesus is pleased to receive our praises because we are here as his people whom he has called us. We did not choose him, he chose us. We did not come to him, but he came to us and drew us to himself. And in the humble and ordinary looking, unimpressive means with which he clothes himself, he delivers to us salvation as he did on that day in Jerusalem. He brings to us the benefit so that when we are washed in the water of baptism, we are washed with the blood of Christ that flowed from the cross when water and blood mingle together out of his holy sight. And when we come together to receive the Lord's Supper, by God's grace, we will again next week. The body that was broken on the tree of the cross but which rose from the dead never to die again. The blood that flowed from that body on the cross, but now still flows through his life, his living body eternally. That body and that blood, they are brought to us for us to eat and to drink so that we might become partakers of his everlasting life already here on earth as we await his second coming. And as we hear the words that Jesus spoke once to the people of Israel in the first century and his apostles preached, in the Mediterranean world in that first century, that word is delivered to us and it speaks to us. So that the, all the promises of God are yes in him for you. And by those means he comes to us now and he prepares for himself a dwelling place in our hearts and in our lives. So that we might be a people prepared on the day that his glory is revealed to all creation. And so that we might become partakers of the divine nature, just as he became a partaker of our human nature. And so we are called to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to him. But just as in Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, he is pleased to, reveal, to receive from us what we are and what we have. 
He does not ask for gold and silver and precious stones. But he does call for all of us, all that we are and all that we have, to be his. He calls us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, to put on himself, for us to be clothed in him and clothed in his righteousness, and therefore all of our life to be now his. So that we might be saved in the totality, completeness of our lives. And that through his presence in our lives, the whole world might be blessed. Matthew doesn't tell us, but we know from the other Gospels that there were many there who heard this singing and they grumbled. They did not like it. But the reason they didn't like it was because they heard it. And even today, there are many in the world who do not rejoice in hearing the Gospel of Jesus Christ, but they grumble or worse, they oppose it. But that's only possible if they hear it. And when the gospel is proclaimed to all nations, there are those who will oppose, there are those who will ignore, those who will, uh, who will play with it for a while, but then throw it aside. But then there are those who are called and chosen, the good soil into which the word of Christ sinks, and which it takes root, and which produces Harvest unto eternal life. And so just as Jesus made himself vulnerable by making himself visible and audible, so he calls us to share in his life with at the risk of sharing his sufferings, but always with the promise that we will share with him in his glory. Especially now that the world seems to be so devoid of hope except in scientific breakthrough or in uh, reducing human freedoms in the hope that we might r avoid grave dangers to our health and well-being. The church has a wonderful opportunity to proclaim that we have a better hope, a hope that cannot be extinguished by COVID-19 or by cancer or by war or by environmental disaster or by any of the other things that which, we, which we fear, which death itself cannot extinguish. Because our hope is not in us, it's not in an idea or in a set of circumstances, it's not in this world at all. Our hope is the Lord Jesus Christ who lives and under his feet is every authority, every power, every enemy. And he rules over these things for our salvation. So may God by his Holy Spirit strengthen your faith in Jesus Christ. Rekindle your love for God and for your neighbour. Give strength for your repentance and encouragement as you continue to follow Jesus, to offer your life as a living sacrifice to him, to serve the church and to serve the world, knowing that Christ himself and in him, triune God and all his ministering spirits are serving you with the gifts of eternal life. And may he bring us into that joy which Christ has won for us and which has been promised to us. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins, and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Save and defend St. David Lutheran Church. Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Evangelical Lutheran Church, Synod of France. Somali Lutheran Church. Fair and Baptist New Life Church. And your whole church throughout the world, purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and the holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works, and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant wisdom and your heavenly grace to Pastor Bessel, to Pastor Gurhan, and to all pastors and those who hold office in your church, that by their devoted service faith may abound and your kingdom increase. Send the light of your truth into all the earth and raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of gods, Lord of Lords, preserve our nation in justice and honour, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favour to Elizabeth, our Queen, and to all who bear office in our land, especially her government, the Parliament, our local, county, city and borough councillors, and all who have authority over us. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. For the advancement of justice and righteousness. For the curbing and punishment of wickedness. For the defence of the defenceless. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have created all, and you sent your Son into the world that all people might be saved. Take from us all hatred and prejudice, and give us the spirit of love, and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labour of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world, that mutual understanding and common endeavour may be increased among all peoples. Have mercy especially on the Uyghur people of China, the Yazidi people of Iraq, and all peoples and tribes who are oppressed and persecuted. Be merciful especially to those who suffer persecution for the sake of your name, including the Elihi family, Amir and Sana and their children. According to your great mercy, bring them relief and help through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service 
that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Lord, you visit the earth and you fill it with your goodness. And so let your blessing remain upon the seed time and harvest, the commerce and industry, the leisure and rest, the art and the culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous and be with all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the just rewards for their labour and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Have mercy on those who are unemployed or underemployed, especially in these times of uncertainty. That all people who would receive their daily bread will be led to receive it with thanksgiving to you for your bountiful goodness. Give wisdom to those who work to increase and to protect the prosperity of this people and especially those who make decisions and administer health care to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. Give them wisdom so to lead this nation and so to care for it that our common life may be enriched. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We bring before God all those for whom our prayers have been requested, those who suffer with sicknesses of body, of mind and of soul, and all in any kind of need. Ron and Cindy and Nicola, Gina, Reg, Carol, Holly, Mike, Jeffrey and his family, Ian, Doug and Myra, Howard, Jana, Sheridan, Holly, Greg, Rita, Diana, Desiree, Ilse, Bob and Lynette, Claire and Phil, Johan, Charlotte, John and his family, Tim, Pauline, Joby, Christine, Serena, Jenny, Michael, Freddie and Grace, Anne, Clive and Richard, John, Philip, Matt, Martin, Ken, Terry, Tressy, Val, Emily, Audrey, Roger and Emily, Wendy and Ingrid. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. With thankfulness, for your answers to our prayers, for Phil, and for all your benefits, Heavenly Father. We bring before you our lives, our bodies and our souls, and all our tasks and callings, asking you to bless us daily with the wisdom from on high, that your Holy Spirit would fill our hearts with faith, and hope and love that we might serve you in your church serve our neighbours selflessly and as we will sing your praises eternally in your heavenly kingdom you would fill our hearts with gratefulness with songs of thanksgiving and praise now here on earth For the sake of our Saviour, your Son, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Closing hymn is number 338, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. We will sing it to the tune, Cross of Jesus. 338, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Mm-hmm. 